Hello Facebook, Steve Woody here for Midday Mastery, episode 21, and today we're going to be talking about sitemaps. Now, just before I get started, I want you to let you know, guys, I'm going to keep this to 15 minutes today, and if I go over 15 minutes, if I get to quarter past 12, I want you just to type in the comments, shut the fuck up, tell me to stop talking, because I don't want to waffle. I want to make sure that what I'm giving you is valuable, that it's on point, and that it helps you. I'll hang around for an extra five minutes for any Q&A, so any questions you've got, please put them underneath. CJ, good to see you, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you. But I want to make sure I keep this short. I want to make sure it's 15 minutes. It's impactful. It's valuable. It gives you what you need. You can just come in, dive in, dive out. I don't want to waffle. I don't want to talk too much. We'll do other videos for stuff like that. So with that in mind, sitemaps. This is sort of chapter three of my book. So we've been working through my book. We're doing sort of 10 chapters. I said we'd do it for 10 weeks. The reality, we don't need 10 weeks to cover my book. Like, we don't need to. I'm kind of really sort of dragging this out to make more content, but sitemaps we can do in 15 minutes. We don't need to spend a week on this. It's done. The reality is that with sitemaps, it's not even that important anymore. Like, the, the world that we live in is transitioning, and what people would say to you before in, oh, you need this and you need that, but, like, the way that people view websites has changed. You know, the way that we look at, like, the, the, the outcome, like, why have we got a website? Why do we want a website? We want to promote our products and services. And so it doesn't matter on the structure and how it's built and how it's done, as long as it's effective and it does what it needs to do. And so the first thing I'd say is that the purpose of understanding a sitemap is that you know that you're going to want a homepage, all right? First and foremost, you know you're going to want a homepage. Now, this is where most people stop. Because what they do is they generate all their traffic and they send it to the homepage, and that's it. Yes, my website is this, this, this. But in reality, what you need to do and what you need to understand with a sitemap is what are the pages that sit underneath the homepage? Now, let's just go top level and we'll do the main ones. We've got an About Us page. Right? We all know that. Most people are going to say they want a blog, but let's be honest, blogs are overrated these days. And who actually updates and keeps up to date and interacts with them? I mean, a blog, if you're going to use it, is good, but if you're not going to use it, then don't use it. You don't need a blog on your website, and it's like a sword. If you have a blog and don't update it, it looks worse than not having one. So make sure if you're going to have a blog that you do update it, or at least remove all of the meta details in the date. You know, when someone clicks on a blog and it's like last updated six months ago, it just makes you look bad. So just make sure you move that. If you've got an about page, you'll probably have a contact page. And so this is what people will do. When you go to get a website, they'll say, you need this, you need this, you'll need a services page, and these are all the things that they'll tell you that you need on your website. But the reality is that all of this, like, doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, you need these pages, but here's what you really need. You need a landing page. We talked about this through the sales funnel process. We talked about this through the customer journey. You need an opt-in page, okay? So your opt-in page needs to go to a sales page, needs to go to a thank you page. You need that for every single product that you have. As long as you have an opt-in page, a landing page, a sales page, a thank you page for every product you've got, an about page is nice to have, a contact page is nice to have. That's all you really need. You don't need a huge overbearing website. You don't need loads of things. I mean, if you've got a shop, then great, have a shop. If you've then got products within your shop, great. Have products within your shop. But the idea of a sitemap, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to understand, like, for your business, for your services, what do you need? What pages do you need? What's relevant for you? Because if you're going to have, like, a blog overview, then you're going to have articles. And so you need to understand, okay, so I'm thinking in the future I'm going to do a podcast. So I'm going to need something about that. Um, I'm probably going to have, I've got my Facebook page, I've got my YouTube channel, I've got all my social media, that's all going to link in so I can do blog articles around that. I've got my podcast, which I'm going to have a page for that. I've got my landing pages, I've got my About Us page, great. I've got my services page, I've got this, I've got that, great. I'm probably going to have a, um, a, a press page or an As Seen As In. Oh, that gives me an idea, I need to have a testimonial page. Success stories. So do you see what I mean? So you can start to build out now what sort of pages that you need. And then you can say, right, okay, this is what my website needs to look like. And then you can start sort of diving in and saying, right, I'm going to focus on this area. And I'm going to work on building this. Now, that's it. That's all, I'm, that's all I need to cover. Get a bit of paper. 
And like in literally the, the, the three or four minutes that I've just done that, you can do the same thing. Just start to ask the question, what do I need? What do I need? What's the journey? Where do I want people to go on? I want them to go from this page to this page to this page. So they're going to go from a shop to products to a checkout uh, to a thank you. What do they need to do? What is the layout of my website? The reason you do this is because it's for something called scope creep. If you go to a developer or you go to a designer and you say, I need these web pages built, they can look at this and say, okay, now we have an idea of the scale of your site. Okay, so you need blog pages and articles. How many articles do you have? Okay, I've got 100 articles. Great. So now we know we can populate that content. So, okay, we need to look at this and say, how many templates do you need? And we're going to cover this tomorrow when we go through wireframes. So we're going to go through the, the, the individual templates tomorrow. But what, now, what we can do now is look at this and say, right, so sort of the about page, the contact page, uh, even the testimonials page, um, they're, they're, they're all, and to a degree, even the services page, maybe even the press page, the podcast page, they're kind of all the same template. They're going to use one template, one layout for all of those pages. Your blog overview will have a different template. Blog articles will have a different template. But all of the articles will have the same template. Make sense? So right now we've got one, two... Three different layouts. Uh, the shop will probably have a layout. The individual products will probably have a layout. All right, your checkout page, that'll have its own template. Uh, the thank you page will probably be the same as the others, as the number ones. Uh, then you'll need, a, you'll need landing pages. So depending on how many products you've got, uh, let's just say that's number seven. Um, your sales page is the same over there. Thank you page is the same over there. So, oh, and your home page as well. So at the moment, we're looking at eight templates. So when they say, because... What used to happen is people say, how many pages is your website? And they judge your uh, cost of build based on how many pages you need. Well, the reality is that at the moment, we need eight templates. It doesn't matter how many pages you need. You can have a thousand pages. It's irrelevant because once you've got a template, you can build as many pages as you want within that template. So pages are irrelevant. We don't need to worry about how many pages we need. We need to worry about how many templates we need because they need to be built. They need to be You can build them yourselves, but ideally they need to be designed. They need to be laid out. They need to be thought about. And once you've got them, you can replicate them. So that's the idea of, from a strategic point of view, your sitemap. Now, the other idea of a sitemap and the other purpose of a sitemap is you want to have, ideally, there's three types of sitemap. And I talk about this in my book. So the book plan, your website goes through this in chapter three. Uh, and I'm going to just clear a little bit of space for this. Does that make sense? Do you get that? Because I'm, I'm, I know I'm rushing through this, but... I don't really need to spend my... If, you need, if you've got any questions, let me know. CJ, what was that? People often say you need a sitemap on your website. Search. I'm going to cover that in a minute, mate. CJ, that's a great point, and that's what I'm going to cover now. So that's the overall layout, right? So let me just uh, scrub some space out of the middle here. If you've got any questions, do let me know about this. It's, it's something that gets overlooked. No one really cares about, but it's something that you do need to focus on. Um, almost as important as getting a whiteboard to sit straight. There we go. So, sitemaps. Three types of sitemaps. Number one is a strategic. A strategic sitemap is exactly what we've just done. It's giving you the intellectual capacity to sit back and say, this is my website. This is what I need. All right? That's the idea, is that you can look at it and you can say, right, I understand. Number two is a customer sitemap. This could be in the footer of your website. On the very bottom of your website, your footer, you may have links that go to different sections and different pages. That's like a sitemap. You may even have a page that is um, www.yourwebsite.com forward slash sitemap. And if people go there, and like I know like Argos, like a lot of the big shopping companies, they'll have a page, and on it will just be products or the links. Services, all the links. FAQ, all the links. And you basically just lay out a page, all the links on your website, so people can know where to go. You know, it's, it's like tourist information, if you like, or customer services. You have a page on your website called Sitemap, and the idea of this is that a customer, or a potential customer, or a visitor, if you've got a big site, you don't necessarily need it for smaller sites, but if you've got a bigger site, and you've got a lot of content, then you want to start structuring this out in a way so people can come here and get an easy, quick, right, I want this, click, 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 I'm there. 
rather than having to go get started, then go through this, and then this landing page, and this opt-in, and go through this. Like, if you like a product and you want to become an affiliate, first thing you normally do is scroll to the bottom of the page and say, okay, affiliates, click. Because that's what you want, right? So most people know to scroll to the bottom of the page and to look at the site map, which most people have within the footer. It's just links to the rest of the site. Make sense? So that's number two. That's for the customer's perspective. So the first one is for you, for the strategic perspective. The second one is for the customer, for the customer's perspective. And number three, as CJ rightly said, is for SEO. Something that is often overlooked is that you assume because you build a website, Google is just going to rank you. But the reality is that Google doesn't know you exist. And it is not Google's job to find you. It is actually your job to tell Google where you are. The way that Google works is it sends out spiders into the World Wide Web, like you can see the whole analogy and how it works. It sends out spiders, which are known as robots, which are scripts. They're not real robots, they're not real spiders, it's code. It's um, a script of code that goes out into the internet, and the idea is it says, look for a link, and it finds a link, and it says, right, on that link, are there any other links? Where do those links go? Okay, where do those links go? Where do those links go? And it just goes out and out and out and out, and the whole... A uh, concept behind Google and the search engine is that it uses links to find its way. So every link that you have from your website to another website, or more importantly, what's called a backlink, is a link from another website to your website. Because if you've got, if the, if you don't exist, if you've got no links going in or out, then you're kind of like isolated on this little island, and you're like, Google, Google, hi, I'm over here. If you've got like a million websites that all link to you. And that's a million times that Google could find you. Does that make sense? So it's important for SEO to understand. Now, what you do in terms of a sitemap for SEO, and there are plugins you can use. Like if you're on WordPress, for example, use the plugin Yoast, and it generates the sitemap for you. There are plugins that you can get that generate the sitemap. And what it does is it will create your URL.com forward slash sitemap.xml. Uh, and, and that will lead you to a page that just looks like that and it's just a load of dribble. The idea behind that is that Google understands that and the robots understand that. Then if you go to, um, I can't remember what it is now, Google Search Control uh, or Console, Google Console. Go into Google, uh, I need to find out what it's called, I've, it's, sorry my mind's gone blank, um, I think it's Google Search Console. So Webmaster Tools. So if you go to Webmaster Tools, you type in Google Webmaster Tools, what will basically happen, I'm just going to flip the camera around now, so does that all make sense there, what I've covered? Give me a second while I just flip this camera around, because I really want to sort of take this out of its holder, that's it, yeah, sorry, I had a bit of a mind mount a minute ago, so, so you can see, uh, do, 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 do. let me just, so this is Google Webmaster, right, so the, the idea here is that I can click on my website, and you could obviously, hold on a second, let me just move all this stuff around. Got stuff on here, hold on. The idea behind this is that now you can click on here and you can see how many URLs you've got submitted. You can see your total clicks on your site. You can see what's happening, any warnings, any errors. But the idea here is that it can crawl you. It can crawl your site. Now, when you kind of look at backlinks on your site and how many backlinks you've got to your site, this, this is really important because... The idea behind this is that you're telling Google, I can go here and I can actually submit, if I click on sitemaps, so as you can see now, I've got my sitemap index, I haven't played with this for a while, I mean, 6th of March, there's 4 warnings, I've got some stuff to sort out, do as I say, not as I do, right, but the idea behind this is if I click add new sitemap, I actually put the link of where my sitemap is, and so the idea behind this is that you're telling Google where you are, the whole purpose of you telling is, is that Google doesn't know, as I said, Google, you need to tell Google where you are so it can find you, so that it can index you, and so that it can rank you for SEO. Now, obviously you need to have content for this to make sense. If you don't have content, then there's no point because there's a lot of things Google's going to look at. Google's going to look at your speed, any errors that you've got on your site, any backlinks, how long you've had your domain for, are the contents relevant. There's a lot of things that Google's going to use in its algorithm to determine whether it's going to SEO you. But if you don't exist, then there's no way it can find you. So you need to know that you've got your sitemap, that you've strategically done it. Like, let me just, again, bring you back around here. You need to know that strategically, 
your sitemap is for you to understand the process of what pages you need, and that's to help stop scope creep. You need to know from a customer's perspective that there are quick links either in a footer or on an individual page that they can click on. And you need to know for SEO perspectives. So that's it. That's all you need to know about sitemaps. Don't overcomplicate this. This isn't something you need to spend more time on than you actually need. What I would say, one of the most important things is when you're considering... I'm just going to put this back down. Bear with me a sec. Kind of pick the camera up and uh, I realise it's going to get a bit wobbly now. What I would say in terms of um, your sitemap, when you're looking... And we come back to the um, when we come back to the strategic point that I was mentioning, and we look at the top level. The main thing that you want to do and you want to consider is when you look at your home page that we talked about, and you look at these initial pages. Like you might want get started, right? You might want products. You might want testimonials. You might want contact. You might want about. Normally, what happens is this becomes your top menu on your website. So when you have a, a menu on your website, so you have your logo here, for example, and then you have the links, you'll normally find that those links are whatever your top menu pages are. And they can change on different pages. You know, on a landing page, I recommend you have no top menu because you don't want to distract anyone. The idea of a landing page is you want them to take action. You want them to do something. So you want to actually remove the menu from pages where you don't want them to go anywhere else but down. The whole idea here is this is more of an overview. If you want them just to browse, if someone's just browsing your site, then you want to give them options. And you want to give them options along the top menu, very simple, clear, easy, one line, simple one or two words. Don't overcomplicate it with like fancy terminology. Like in your menu, you don't have like PPC mastery because like who the hell knows what that means, right? Or like it's got to be relevant. Take out all the terminology, all the jargon, make it really simple. Get started. Products, services, testimonials, contact, about. Like, things that people see and click and go, okay, I get it, I understand. Like, there's no thought process behind it. And then anything that is like privacy policy, terms and conditions, affiliate links, anything like that, anything that's more sort of in-depth, like individual product landing pages, things that you want people to click on, put that in the footer so that people can go there, click and can go through and see everything. In fact, it's inspired me because I don't have it on my site right now. I don't have a footer on my site. I'm going to go and do that right now. I suggest you do the same thing. Take some time today, strategically map out your site map. Bit of A4 paper, turn off the laptop, turn off the computer, sheet of A4 paper, get a pen, and just start writing down all of the pages that you need on your website, all of the templates that you need on your website. Think of it from a customer's perspective, so you might need to upload a page, or if not, the footer, which is what I'm going to go and do right now. And then an SEO perspective, if you're using WordPress, something like Yoast, and then upload that, go onto Google, set up your webmasters, go into Google Search Console, and submit your sitemap. I don't really know what a footer was for. Well, a footer, the idea of a footer is it's just, if you get to, like, you've got you to imagine, right, the, the outcome of having a web page is that you want someone to do something. You're, t you're creating a story, you're, you're, you're taking them on a journey, and at some point on that page, they should then interact or do something. They should click a button and go somewhere. It's like the, the only outcome you should have on a page is what's next. So if you consider that they've got to the bottom of the page, that they don't actually want to do anything. So they've got to the bottom of the page, and now it's kind of like, well, look, I've told you what to do. You don't really want to do it. You're at the bottom, so here's some options. Because you don't just want them to close it down. You want them to interact. So you need to give them options and things to do to interact. You could have your contact details in there. It could be a map. could be social media links. Never put the social media links on the top of the page. Put them at the bottom. We'll cover that tomorrow. But the footer is an area where you can sort of put all of the... It's like the man drawer. It's the man drawer of the website. You put all your crap in the footer, so it's all there. So all the junk goes into the footer, and then everyone can find their way around and find what they need. All right, it's all there if you need it. But you don't want it on display. It's just there if you need it. Make sense? Go create your man drawer. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to go through wireframes. Tomorrow we're going to dive down into the individual pages and look at the template and the structure and the layout and how to do a page. We've done it before. I'm not going to go too in-depth. It's going to be a really sort of quick one day. We're going to just cover this, get it done, get it out of the way. Anybody that you need to know uh, that needs to know about this, tag them in the comments below. Please let me know. Check me out on YouTube. But I'm not getting that many subscribers on YouTube. I'm getting a lot more interaction on Facebook Live, which is why I do this. But please hop over to YouTube. I'd be really grateful if you would just subscribe because that's going to help get my view account up. All my videos on there, they look really empty. And I, I, I kind of want to make sure that I put these playlists on there. But that is it. CJ, I'm done. 20 minutes. We're done. New record. That's it. Hope it helps. I hope you have a great day. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.
Can't end the video. Ah.